Welcome back. Time for the word on Wall Street. Joining me right now, Divine Asset Management CEO Danielle Hughes, Mahoney Asset Management CEO Ken Mahoney, and Federated Hermes Senior Equity Strategist Linda Dissell. First up, markets trying to break the September slump. Stocks seeing steep losses yesterday. The Dow closing with a 525 point, uh, point loss. And futures are uh, this morning mixed fractional moves here. Ken Mahoney, what's your take on this selling? And I, I should also point out what we're seeing uh, in terms of uh, today's market activity. You've got a lot of Federal Reserve speakers. You've got uh, the Fed's uh, Kaplan from Texas. You've got uh, Evans, Barkin, Williams, Bostick, all speaking at, at, at different uh, events. And, of course, there's uh, Federal Reserve Chairman uh, Powell and Stephen Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary, continuing their, their uh, testimony today to the Senate. What's your take on all of that? Yeah, look, the Fed feels like they're, their hands are tied. They're waiting for the stimulus side of things, the fiscal side of things, to get things going for the economy. Jerome Powell put his hands up. But kind of where we are in September, we have to look back to August. I mean, August was really frothy. I mean, we were only down four days in the month of August, and here we are down in September, four last five trading days. And you felt this frothiness, you know, Robin Hood traders, you know, trading in one hand and playing Xbox in the other hand. And look, mom, no hands. And at the end of the day, we know this market's a bronco, and you better have some type of self-discipline. When we are ramping up and we are overbought, way far above a 200-day moving average, incrementally, you got to take some chips off the table. Now we meet September, which the last 20 years, September has not been so pretty. Um, and then, of course, we have the election uncertainty, the fiscal, as, as we mentioned, uh, not getting passed. You put it together, and here we are in September. But I have to tell you, we like technology here. We like that we have this correction. We think it's a technical correction, not anything to do with the fundamentals. So, you know, we'd be looking to incrementally buy back those positions that we saw with the frothiness in August. Let me do this. All right. Linda Dessel, your thoughts? Uh, I, you know, I agree with what your other guest has said. We did get frothy, but what I found interesting about the frothiness was, and this, I think, dovetails with the Robin Hood users, is that it was the biggest names. Those biggest names were up like 59 percent, the last figure I saw, year to date through maybe September 8th. But the other 495 names were up 1 percent year to date. So there is a lot of uh, room in the marketplace beyond these names to find great value. And we at Federated Hermes are bullish on the market. And having a little money on the sidelines after the pretty much parabolic move uh, in the last couple of months, we're starting to put that back to work now. Yeah, I mean, you know, where rates are at, at zero, Linda, I mean, are there any other opportunities? Are there alternatives when you know you're not getting yield anywhere else? Isn't that the longstanding push to own stocks? It's, it, it absolutely is. And, and there are good fundamental reasons behind it, too. Even the biggest names, as a share, as a, a share of the S&P 500 is a big share, but so are their earnings share. So, uh, so it, there's very there's a lot of uh, idea that next year will be a good year earnings wise for the marketplace and could justify this. But zero interest rates with a Fed that has no desire whatsoever to raise rates anytime soon, a Fed and, and even regardless of who wins this election, an administration that says we won't let you fall back into recession. I mean, this is absolutely music to the uh, to the ears of equity investors. And I think it's dangerous to be a bear in here. It's dangerous to be a bear regardless of the election, Linda. I mean, the policies could not be more different when you look at Trump and Biden. Do things change should Biden win this election? Well, I think I think the marketplace is worried about Biden raising taxes, or at least they say they are. I mean, we've been talking about what would happen if Biden won from a market and a stock point of view. You know, the social policy, et cetera, is, is a different and very important area. But as the market is concerned, it's all about the tax hikes. And when people say, well, you know, the market hasn't been considering tax hikes, I call hogwash. If we're all talking about it, then the market is considering that. And the market is even considering now what if Trump should uh, refuse to leave office if he if he loses. He has to say he has to say things that, that drum up his base. But if we're talking about it, it's in the market, which is the market's a forecasting mechanism. Figure it's in the market. Look at fundamentals and say, really, we're all progressives now. Money will be easy regardless of who wins. It's just a question of how much. Danny Hughes, uh, what, what are the opportunities that you see today? Well, I, I agree with Linda and Ken. Well, we appear poised for a stronger advance, longer term, but it's going to be a period of choppy and corrective clearing of imbalances because leadership was too concentrated, and you can't have a sustained advance 
led by cyclicals without the financials. So again, the Fed indicating rock bottom interest rates really indicates that we have to take more risk as investors. And we like to look at places that are expanding, that are long term uh, stories. And I have a couple of names that I'd like to share, um, particularly in healthcare spending. We like CVS. We own it. Um, it's down 22 percent year to date. Um, they're not only a healthcare solutions provider, they're brick and mortar, they're digital. They bought Aetna in 2017. And in the second quarter of this year, during the COVID crisis, uh, they, they had $7.1 billion that they generated in cash and a sustainable dividend of 3.5%. Um, so we like, we like the healthcare space an awful lot. Well, I'll tell you, it, it's hard to find uh, yield anywhere with, uh, with the exception of those dividend plays. It's a great point, Danny. Thank you so much. Danielle Hughes, Ken Mahoney, and Linda Dissel. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Quick break, and then Amazon.